This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Jamie Glazoff Moment. Tonight, FGM cutters flown into UK to mutilate Muslim girls. My friends, the UK's Independent has recently reported that, quote, FGM cutters are being flown into UK to mutilate Muslim girls to order. My friends, there's an actual survivor who's warning about these cutters coming in to the United Kingdom. And now Lizzie Dearden has written about this at The Independent. You can also just Google this and look this up at the Geller Report, at Jihad Watch. They're all on this. You are not going to see this on ABC or at NBC or CBS or CNN. Uh, you know, our establishment media is too busy worrying about Russian collusion and, of course, the Me Too movement, but that doesn't include Muslim girls who are perpetrated to this, uh, who are victims uh, of this barbarity. So what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen, is that cutters are being flown into the United Kingdom to perform female genital mutilation on young Muslim girls. Now, Hoda Ali, an FGM survivor and activist in West London in the UK, has affirmed that Muslim families are paying for this barbaric practice to be perpetrated on their daughters in the United Kingdom. And they're also taking their children abroad to have this barbarity perpetrated against them. This is actually happening on a mass scale. This is only a glimpse into what's happening here. This is happening in the UK. It's happening in the West. And in, in terms of the West, it's happening here in the United States. It's happening in Canada. And we're allowing this. In terms of this story, the United Kingdom is allowing this. Our leaders, our media, and, and the people have been cowed. They're scared. People are scared. Leaders are scared. The media is scared to be called racist or Islamophobic. And also a lot aren't scared. A lot are, in, when it comes to the left, are in collusion with. They're enabling this. They're building their socialist utopia and it involves an alliance with Islamic supremacism and young Muslim girls, in this case, are sacrificed on the altar of utopian ideals. Female genital mutilation, my friends, in terms of this story, cutters being flown into the United Kingdom to perpetrate this vicious crime to maim Muslim girls. Do you care about Muslim people? Now, the left and Islamic supremacists, they like calling us racists, that we, that the counter-jihad movement, that the anti-Sharia activists somehow hate Muslim people. But, you see, this is how they twist everything and put it upside down. Because we're actually the ones that care about Muslim people. We care about Muslim girls. We want to stop FGM. We want to stop those cutters that are being flown into the United Kingdom and nothing is being done about it. And Muslim girls are being mutilated and maimed. We want to stop it. And we're not afraid of what you're going to libel us and what you're going to slander us with in our attempt to stop this vicious component of Sharia and of Islamic law. And so there's a whole bunch of people out there that, you know, on the left, oh, this has nothing to do with Islam, this has nothing to do with Islam. Once again, let's just, let's just go one step at a time here. Female genital mutilation is widespread in Egypt, in Iraqi Kurdistan, in Somalia, in Sudan, in Mauritania, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in parts of India, brackets, Islamic parts. Now, these countries that I just named share little in culture, in language, in climate. What could be the common denominator why female genital mutilation is practiced there? Hmm. Could it be Islam? My friends, the Islamic texts is what the Imams and the Muftis point to when they justify female genital mutilation. Do you care? When, when the equivocators and obfuscators come forward with all these stupid specious arguments to try to stop 
us from stopping female genital mutilation or from us trying to help stop this practice. All these species arguments are being used. Oh, well, you know, it, Muslims aren't the only people that practice female uh, genital mutilation. Okay. So it doesn't just happen under Islam. Does that mean that we don't do anything about it? Because somebody commits some kind of crime somewhere else, does it mean that we don't stop a crime being committed on this side? We need to stop female genital mutilation everywhere. And it is mostly prevalent under Islam. And it is most difficult to stop under Islam because the religious texts inspire and sanction it. Islam makes female genital mutilation necessary because of its teachings. And we're not going to be able to protect four million girls a year that are in danger of it every year. We're not going to be able to protect them if we're not going to be honest about what female genital mutil mutilation is and what inspires and sanctions it. Islam makes it mandatory because of what is in the reliance of the traveler, because of what's in the hadiths, in Abu Dawood, in Sahih Muslim, in Sahih Bukhari. Those texts mandate FGM. And so when the deniers come forward and start with their equivocation and obfuscation and start with, this is not Islamic, this is not Islamic, we hear that all the time. It doesn't matter what you say. It matters what the Islamic texts say and the Islamic texts that the imams, muftis and clerics point to when they justify FGM. You just look at Egypt and all the efforts by reformers to try to stop female genital mutilation in Egypt. And every time their reform is made impossible because of what the imams and the muftis and the clerics point to in terms of Islamic texts to keep this monstrosity happening against Muslim women and Muslim girls. So if you're saying that this is not Islamic, say that to the cutters. Don't say it to the people that are trying to stop the cutters. 513,000 girls, half a million girls and women, are at risk in the United States alone. Elizabeth Yore, the founder of EndFGMToday.com, is one of the brave and noble people on the front lines trying to stop FGM worldwide and here in the United States. Her name is Elizabeth Yore. Go to endfgmtoday.com. Also Google my show on the Glasoff Gang with Elizabeth Yore. Just look up Glasoff Gang and FGM Today and we discussed with, Liz with Elizabeth everything that their group is nobly trying to do to stop FGM, everything that's happening in the United States right now where a half a million girls are at risk, and everything that the left and even leftist feminists are going out of their way to try to stop FGM from being stopped. They're at, the left is actually in league with those who are cutting Muslim girls while they're telling us that we hate Muslim people. That's how the jihadist psychopath works, my friends. My book, Jihadist Psychopath, is coming out very soon. In that book, I explain how the jihadist psychopath works. I explain and I make very evident why, for instance, female genital mutilation is being practiced here in the West today and why the West is surrendering to it. And I explain why the left is in league with the perpetrators and why it turns its callous back, why it covers its eyes with a blindfold. Why is there this willful blindness to the suffering of Muslim women and Muslim girls, and of non-Muslim women and non-Muslim girls in terms of, you know, what, what happens in terms of Sharia, in terms of rape, in terms of sexual slavery, everything. She had a psychopath explains why all of these things are happening, why there's an Islamization happening, and why the left is in league with it. Equip yourself with the knowledge of what the jihadist psychopath is doing, how he does it, why the left is enabling him. And when you equip yourself with that knowledge, you will equip yourself with the armor to protect 
all Muslim women and girls and all women and girls, period, from Sharia and our civilization and all people from jihad and Sharia and all forms of totalitarianism. We'll see you soon on the Jamie Glazoff moment. Good night.